What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Your boy, the Dread Man, is back, and you see the topic for tonight's video. Now, with the emergence of YouTuber Kevin Samuels and the exposure that the Red Pill community is getting on YouTube, and it's, it's becoming mainstream now, the high value man narrative. And ahead of time, I do want to apologize if this video is lengthy because there's a lot of things that need to get off my chest. Now, I've been following Kevin Samuels' content for about eight or nine months now. And his content is very entertaining and it is pretty informative. Now, I like his content, but do I agree with everything he says? No, I can't say that I do because with every red pill guru, dating coach, pickup artist, or you know, life coach, there's still some going to be some flaws in his logic and some holes in his game because no one's perfect. But this narrative of the high value man, because in reality, anybody can come out and say that they're a high value man. Because what's what the thing is, what is valuable to you? What do you define as high value? Is it the guy with the biggest bank account? Is it the guy who got the looks, the money, and the swagger? Is it a guy who has a professional athlete physique? That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to get at is what do you find valuable? Because if you ask a hundred different men and women what they define as high value, I guarantee you'll get a hundred different answers. And that's the thing, is I kind of am lost on what high value means. Because look it up in the dictionary. High meaning top, peak, upper echelon, cream of the crop, value. Value, if you look that up in the dictionary, it equates to how much something is worth, the monetary value of something. How much is it worth? And that's the thing. What is worth it to you? And that's what a lot of men who are pursuing being high value have to ask themselves is, what's worth it to you? And that's also what a lot of women got to ask is like, you know, if you are in pursuit of a man of high value, what is going to be worth, like, what do you find value? I mean, as far as your morals, your integrity, what you look for in a person, all the other qualities. And I'm going to get, I'm going to dive deeper into that later. But, um, yeah, like I said, anybody can come out and, and find, and, um, pretty much say that they're high value, but what principle do they stand on? What morals do they have? And it's, it, to me, it's more about what you bring to the table as far as looks, money, attraction, swagger, and your popularity. It's, it's, it's more than that. But then again, that could be all what you value. I mean, is it about your looks? Is it about your money? Is it about your status? Is it all of these things that make a high value man? Or is it none of these? And that's what, I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to ask you guys. Leave it in the comments. What's valuable to you? Now, <laughs> needless to say, <laughs> money does not make a man high value. Money alone does not make a man high value. I mean, because if you look at, the, if, look at what's been going on recently, is, and this is kind of the reason why a lot of American men are foregoing marriage, is because I've said this before and I'll say it again. There are a lot of men who feel like that once they make a certain amount of money or get in a certain tax bracket, they feel like they become Superman. They feel like that they become impervious to the BS. Like, oh, I'm in a high tax bracket now. I'm in a six, seven, eight bracket, you know, eight, seven, six, seven, eight figure bracket range now. Now I'm untouchable. Really? You think that? You really think that you're invincible? Do you really think that you can't get got? <coughs> Wrong. Because this is the sad fact. Because if you have just money, if you just have a, a huge beefy bank account, but you don't have any looks or you don't have any charisma or no personality to back that up, then guess what? Every woman you come across is just going to see you as an easy lick. She's going to see you as a commodity. She's going to see you as a come up. She's going to see you just as something. She's going to see you as something that she can use for her own gain. And guess what? Once If, she, if you were to fall on hard times, She's going to be out the door. Like, you, like, well, I can get the woman that I want now because I have money. But it's messed up because some of these dudes only have the chick they got right now because they have money. And that's a damn shame. It's like, well, oh, man, I got, you know, I'm making six figures now. I, I can get any chick I want. Newsflash, homeboy, she likes your money. She does not like you. And that's the thing. I would rather be a nigga that's broke and a chick not like me for that reason than for me to have money or be in a certain tax bracket and that be the only reason that the chick like me. And for that reason is why a man's financial status does not make him high value. High earning and high value are not the same thing. 
check this out. Somewhere in America, there's a nigga with no job, no car, no real education, probably got a drug problem, a drinking problem, a history of domestic violence, got five or six kids, all by different baby mamas, and he lives in his grandmother's garage. Not that there's anything wrong with that last one, but I'll probably get that in another video. But yet, all those things that are wrong with him, all those flaws, but yet, he can probably still pull the same women as the high-value man. And this guy's out there who are doing pretty well for themselves. Got the credit score up, got the body in shape. This guy's who, you know, got a nice job, got a nice car, live in a nice house or apartment or condo, and, you know, have a pretty decent bank account who are doing pretty well for themselves. But yet, those guys can't get a text back. And yet, you know, Darnell, Pookie, Boo Boo, Ray Ray, Tyrone, and Reggie is the one who was smashing that girl. Like, the girl that the, that the high-value man usually wants, the guy who spent time building himself on, they, he, like, Reggie can get the same type of girl, but with half of the effort. And what, you want to know why? It's because he can appeal to her. He basically stimulates her mind and stimulates her emotions. He's more than just, oh, you know, let me open up my wallet so this girl can like me. No. That's why a lot of, that's why it kills me. Like, oh man, I'm, just because I'm high earning doesn't mean, just because I'm high earning means I'm high value. No, it does not. And it don't matter how high value you are if you're not entertaining. Because do y'all want to know one thing? Do you want to know what, like, the number one thing that, that gets a woman off, this is what it is. Do you know what, what women hate more than a man who lies, cheats, steals, uses and abuses? Do you want to know what they hate the most? They hate being bored. They cannot stand a man who is boring to them. That's the reason why a lot of guys who are high earning, they are boring to them. They, when, when guys leave with their wallets and she sees that, she's thinking in her head, hmm, I don't like this dude, but he looks like he got himself together. Let me just milk this dude for all he's worth and let me just go out. And that's the most that's the messed up part about it. And I was going to bring this up later on in the video, but I'm going to bring it up now. You know, there's women who will be with a man who is high earning and milk him for all he's worth. And then go back to bum-ass Tyrone or Reggie or Boo Boo or Pookie or Darnell or whoever else. That's the most messed up part about it is, is that you will be, the thing is, a lot of guys feel like they're untouchable just because they make a certain amount of money. No, at that point, you become a target. You become a bullseye. And let me, do y'all want more confirmation of this? All right, y'all don't believe me? Exhibit A. Exhibit B. Exhibit C. And that's why I say that your financial status don't mean a damn thing to a woman who doesn't truly like you as a person or as a man. Because guess what? You look at the examples that I just listed and ask yourself this. If I become high value, I put all that work in, all that time and effort just to have it snatched away like that. And ask yourself this. If I were to become horribly crippled or disfigured in an accident, if I were to lose my money, lose my job, lose my car, lose my place to stay, would I be able to get the same woman I got now? You want to know the answer to that? Hell no. Because you spent so much time and effort putting, you know, trying to be high value or, you know, try to become a high earning man that you threw everything else out the window. And that is the, one of the number one gripes and complaints that I have with this high value man narrative. And a lot of men and women need to pay attention to this because it's okay to pursue your dreams and goals. It's okay to reach for the stars and become high value. It's okay to want to be a high earning person, but don't get lost in the sauce. Don't lose yourself. The number one problem that I have is that a lot of men are trying so hard to become high value that they forget the entire reason why they're trying to become high value in the first place. So with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, in your pursuit to becoming high value or to becoming the best possible version of yourself, when you look back on it and you reach a goal, can you say this? Why did you become high value? Why on, on your certain journey to become high value? Did you do it for yourself? Or was there another reason why you decided to do it? Did you do it for money, clout, power, fame? Or did you do it to attract someone that you could attract before? Or like I said, did you do it for your own personal growth and development? you got to ask yourself these things once you become high value. Because... Like I said, you'll become it like once you become high value, you're not invincible. You're not indestructible. You have a bullseye on your chest. And that leads my question to the ladies side of this. <laughs> now, there are a lot of women who are in pursuit of a high value man. And 
there's a rule in the red pill community called the 80-20 rule, where the 80% of women, the majority, want the top 20% of men, the minority. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting what you want or liking what you like, but just understand, <clears throat> as your list and your requirements for what a man is supposed to have gets bigger, your window and your opportunity and what you want, finding what you really want gets smaller and smaller. And let me go back to the fellas right, right quick for one second. Is, fellas, when you become high value, guess what? You got to compete with other high value men. Your journey is not over there. Guess what? I mean, because only, they, they only about, what, 20% of people in America are making six figures or better. But guess what? You making six figures, another dude is a millionaire. You a millionaire, another dude's a billionaire. You a billionaire, another dude is a multi-billionaire. So guess what? Your journey does not stop there. There are other high-value men that you have to compete with. And ladies, ladies, let me go back to y'all, is y'all are going to be competing for those top 20% of men. So don't be surprised if you're sharing. And this is the number one point where I agree with Kevin Samuel, is there's nothing wrong with wanting what you want, liking what you like, or having standards, is you got to meet the standards. You have to be what you attract. Like, if you want a man who is tall, built, making six figures, driving a nice car, you can't be working at, you know, at, at, at some rinky-dink shoe outlet store and living in a one-bedroom studio apartment. Like I said, it ain't nothing wrong with that. But like I said, you have to meet the standards that you require. You know, it, it, it's, it's only fair. And that's why a lot of, of men are upset with women. And the thing is, a lot I see I see um, women's comments on videos like this one. It's like, well, oh, a lot of men are, are pissed off with women because women have standards that they'll never reach. Well, with that in mind, you need to be careful what you wish for because you're going to get everything you asked for along with everything you didn't. What, if you were just, just so happy to land a high-value man, you better be ready for all the BS that comes along with that. And see, that right there is why... I won't ask anything of anybody that I couldn't do or provide myself. Same thing with the fellas is you can't be demanding some fine supermodel type of chick who belong, who looks like she belongs on the cover of Sports Illustrated and has her own business and no kids if you're just some lazy, ambitious slob. Now, and don't get me wrong because, like I said, does that happen? Do women usually end up with guys like that or do they end up with guys like that every now and then? Yes, they do, but don't hold your breath. That really is a one in a million type of thing. So you have to be the kind of person that you want to attract. It's only fair. But then again, like we don't really live in a fair world. We live, the thing is, we don't live in a world of fairness. We live in a world of entitlement. I deserve X, Y, and Z because I provide X, Y, and Z. Or, you know, a person has to pick up the slack for what I lack. It doesn't work that way. You have to, that's the reason why, I, and like I said, that's the reason why Kevin Samuels says that if you are, if you're demanding this, but you don't bring this to the table, you're going to miss a lot of opportunities and you're going to end up alone at age 75 in a one bedroom apartment with a whole bunch of cats and nobody wants to, live, to do that. But that's also one part where I disagree with Kevin Samuels. Well, I might not see eye to eye with him about that because you got to think about it is... I ask again, what's valuable to you? To me, a lot of people should, what a, pe what a lot of people should value is peace and happiness because it's a lot of people right now who are in relationships or who are in long-term marriages for stability, for, you know, as a safety blanket. The person that they are with does not actually make them happy I, I, because I see a lot of people, I see there's, 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 married, there's, there's been couples who have been married for years and guess what? They are freaking miserable. Oh, we've been married for 25, 30, 32 years. Yeah, you've been married for 30 years, but you haven't been happy in 15. So what the hell is the point? You guys tell me. Like a lot of people, like Kevin says that some people are going to die alone. But thing is, a lot of people really would rather be alone for the rest of their lives than for them to be with somebody who they're not really compatible with or attracted to or really don't want to be with. And if you look at our, if you look at the older generation, a lot of people, like even back to my parents' generation, like my parents, they came up, they, you know, when they came up, they met each other, they were broke. They had nothing. And it took them 
25, 30 plus years for them to build what they have now, as opposed to a lot of people right now who are just looking for an easy come up. They want somebody who, but in closing, no, there is no one blueprint as to what makes a man high value. And if it is, this is just me personally. I think it's morals. I think it's values. I think it's what that man stands on. Because I'm going to tell y'all this. I don't give a damn about what some woman brings to the table. And a woman shouldn't, you know, give a damn about what a man brings to the table to her financially. If that, if they, if that person is no good to you, if they mean you no good, if, they, if they're doing more harm, then guess what? They need to go. Because a lot of people stay in toxic relationships or toxic situations only because that person is doing something for them. And guess what? You're killing yourself that way. It's like, well, you might be benefiting, you might be benefiting from it right now, but guess what? You're going to be eaten alive. And that's why a lot of people commit suicide. And that's one reason why the divorce rate is so high. But I'm going to get to the divorce rate topic in another video. But yeah, show me who the hell you are first so I can know what you're dealing with, what I'm dealing with here. I don't give a damn about what you bring to the table. And the thing is, you shouldn't give a damn about what somebody brings to the table either if they mean you no good. But like I said, I can go on and on about this all night long, guys. And like I said, I, I know this video is lengthy. Thank you if you watched it all the way up to this point. But there's just a lot that I had to get off my chest. I'm probably going to make a continuation of this video, but this was just the, the meat of what I'm going to talk about. Anyway, you guys let me know. What makes a high-value man? What are the qualities and what do you find valuable? And ladies, what do you do you find a high-value man as a man who makes money? Is, he, is it his looks? Is it his money? Is it his status? Is it the way he carries himself? Or is it something else entirely? Well, you guys let me know what you think in the comments. This one really should be interesting because I haven't really put this much effort or time into a video in a long time. All right. Peace out, guys. See you later. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to. But I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Already has everything while bringing nothing to the table themselves. That's called being an energy vampire. And you do not want that. And the thing is, if you're an energy vampire, karma will come for you. It really will.